Just wanted to really provide a bit of background about what the City of Ballarat's experiences have been. Um, we've had a uh, what I consider to be fairly lengthy relationship with CCTV right back um, from 2005 when I was asked to write a council report and investigate what the parameters and what council's role might be in relation to CCTV. Following on from that piece of work, um, we did some further work which was really around um, endorsing the installation of a public place CCTV system. And that predominantly was in response to two pieces of work which we undertook. One was um, specifically around doing a bit of a needs analysis and engaging, doing some community consultation and engagement with our broader community around what people's understanding, perceptions of safety were, looking at um, crime analysis. We've had um, excellent support from Victoria Police right from the get-go in relation to accessing appropriate data. And from that, those foundation works, council endorsed um, the use of CCTV, very specifically in the late night entertainment precinct, um, which is where the, uh, the data analysis and the crime stats suggested were our hotspots. And from that, we then applied for some national community crime prevention funding and uh, council then kicked in a further $200,000 towards that. So that was our initial experience of dollars for CCTV. So how was it developed? Once again, that foundation work is really essential, community engagement and consultation, working out the best methodology to consult with your community, establishing the need, looking at key stakeholder groups, how best to consult with community, particularly around perceptions of safety, fear of crime. We did um, what we consider at the time to be reasonably innovative um, uh, community engagement practices. We looked at um, doing some on common bus route consultation, so with uh, in terms of transit, bus interchange type areas, particularly in our CBD area, we ran some focus groups. We talked to our liquor accords, security guards, patrons of nightclubs, retailers, commerce, Ballarat, as many stakeholders as we could. Naturally, we were speaking to Victoria Police as well. Community Safety Advisory Committee, which is made up of a host of different community groups and representatives. So we were trying to do as much consultation as we could to get a better understanding about whether our community needed slash wanted um, CCTV. So it's really important to establish a need for CCTV in your community, perceptions of safety. You also need to start considering things around cost benefit analysis, um, around crime prevention and community safety. It has been mentioned previously, but things which we didn't do with our initial uh, stage one rollout was looking at a really coherent marketing and communications plan. So what we were doing, and, and it's it's a critical part of the project, particularly if you're wanting to engage with the community throughout or at the end of the project around evaluation. So keeping the community informed in terms of what progress you're made, what locations are you having CCTV in? What is the intention of the CCTV so that people aren't misguided in their understanding about um, what the, the possible outcomes might be? The evaluation plan, it's been mentioned previously, but it's really important to develop that early on um, in the project. At the same time, you're developing your aims and objectives. You need to be thinking about evaluation, how you're going to evaluate um, your project. Are you going to say that CCTV project will decrease crime? Well, in some cases, CCTV, inherent in the, the whole concept of CCTV, will actually result in an increase of crime rate because it is, has a detectional focus. So you need to be very careful in terms of your evaluation and what you're hoping to achieve from that. Technical works and system design, council were able to engage an excellent consultant to advise us on how, the, how it should work, all that foundation um, technology, best practice, um, what is the best use of um, PTZ cameras, fixed cameras, we talked about mobile cameras, we talked about a whole range of different technology, wireless, fibre optic cabling, all those things. So that, that was really critical. Our model um, and how, how our, consistently our model operates is a model of council own the infrastructure and maintain it, upgrade it, repair it, and Victoria Police operate the system. So our model is that council don't have any jurisdiction, capacity, no access to data. Victoria Police and through their legislative framework and CLEDs and privacy, freedom of information, take control of all that data. So council doesn't own any data and that's that's stipulated in our MOU and our standard operating procedures as well. So what council's role is and what Victoria <laughs> Police's role is, is very clear. But um, I guess the, the upshot there, there's the technical works, the system design, it's very critical. 
This is stage three of our CCTV system. It includes a number of different aspects, which includes additional cameras. We've now looked at sites outside our late, late night entertainment precinct. So we've now looked at um, high volume transport interchange locations. We've looked at covering most of licensed premises in the immediate CBD late night um, entertainment precinct. We've also run a project in relation to the integration of 48 existing cameras which have been operated by the Bridge Mall Traders, which is a separate mall. So that's now also come online in terms of becoming part of the public place CCTV system. Um, our aim for this project is really about supplying Victoria Police with an extension to the existing system and specifically looking at the CBD and some components of the late night entertainment precinct. Our objectives to increase public confidence and perceptions of, and community pe perceptions of safety. And when we created those objectives, we then started looking at how would we evaluate that, how would we measure that. And of course, we need to act in accordance with the MOU, the Code of Practice and other legislative frameworks and requirements. I also just need to say that um, it has been talked um, today so far fairly significantly about CCTV not being a panacea and we very strongly believe that is, that is the case. In those areas which we have applied CCTV, there's a whole lot of other projects, programs and preventative um, type um, initiatives that are running. So in terms of our late night entertainment precinct, we have two city safe taxi ranks, we have a designated driver program, we've undertaken a substantial lighting, lighting upgrade, um, we have a be safe program which is run with local universities, uh, particularly during key events during the like orientation week. Uh, we have a very active liquor accord and liquor accord members. We've reactivated through urban design a number of public spaces within the precinct. We are very um, cognizant of liquor licensing and council's role in liquor licensing and, a, and strongly relates with the Victoria Police in relation to licensed venues around our correlated harm, particularly in that area. And um, interestingly, and no doubt we'll be running it very soon for our new councillors, we take our councillors and our senior council staff out on a city safe night experience. So that generally uh, starts uh, on a 2 a.m. on a Sunday morning for a couple of hours. And we, t we take our councillors and senior staff around the local hotspots and uh, demonstrate some of the issues that they consistently hear from our residents and our ratepayers about um, various goings on. It's to dispel any myths. It's so they can see for themselves firsthand what it's like. They can get a sense of what it's like. Um, how did we implement our project? Once again, other people have talked about a PCG or a project control group or project management group. It's important to establish that at the outset so that all council uh, staff and um, areas within the organisation are aware of what their roles and responsibilities would be if uh, the funding was successful. Um, we had naturally infrastructure development and delivery staff, um, marketing and communications to make sure the community are kept informed, finance, legal and governance um, staff, particularly in relation to licence agreements. Um, and community de development. And my role is typically to liaise with stakeholders, property owners. I negotiate licence agreements and legal aspects on behalf of council and um, provide a reporting process back to our community safety advisory committee and back to council as well. So it's important regular meetings that everybody's clear about their roles uh, right from the start. Our community safety advisory committee um, oversaw the project and we provide regular updates to those members. Um, and it's really important to have that sound working relationship with Victoria Police and ensure clarity of responsibilities in the MOU so that everybody's clear about what their roles and responsibilities are. And it's important to keep your funder informed, mainly because in some cases unavoidable delays may occur. The lead time can be long. Be aware that there may be delays um, in get getting up and running. If you encounter the situation where your utility may not be as supportive as you thought they may well be, then it's important to look at alternative sites. So if you're looking at a power call pole or a railway station site or wherever it may be and it's likely to be on a public utility, look for alternative sites when you're actually citing your cameras with your, with your consultant. It's important to also think about heritage, heritage considerations in our late night entertainment precinct. If people are uh, maybe not aware of Ballarat, it is, uh, has quite a, a heritage focus and particularly in the area where CCTV cameras are. So instead of putting it on the, the state, a camera on the state listed um, ANZ bank on the corner of Sturt and 
Lydiard Street, we put it on a building two doors down, which actually met the same need, was able to um, scope the same area and provide surveillance. So that was a useful, um, useful thing. My role is to negotiate and talk with property owners. So when you come to the point of needing to talk to private property owners about asking them if they'd be so gracious to allow council to put a camera on their building, um, you need to think about what are the likely questions they're going to ask. They're going to ask how much is it going to cost? The installation, how much is the power going to cost? You need to get an estimate on the power costs so that you can go to them in that initial meeting um, with all the responses um, to, to their possible questions. We developed a fact sheet with this type of information on it so we could actually give it to people at the outset and uh, be able to respond to their questions. We have on occasions appealed to community members and property owners' corporate citizenship role um, in terms of their um, capacity to provide a good corporate citizen role, and that's been very effective. The, the other thing that private property owners need to know, particularly if they have tenants in building, how who are they, how to negotiate with them, who's going to bear the cost of electricity, access to the store, when is it best that our contractors come and install cameras, out of business hours, all those type of things. So particularly if they're a retail outlet. And um, we were just very lucky in terms of the um, government agencies and public utilities um, that our consultant had a really good idea about which public utilities were likely to support CCTV on their infrastructure and which, which, uh, which utilities weren't. The legal considerations in terms of licence agreements, so each pro private property owner will need to have a licence agreement between council and their particular property. That can be quite timely, take quite a long time to negotiate, particularly if those property owners are interstate or overseas. I mean, it's taken up to eight months to get one licence agreement back during one stage of the project. So it can, be, it can be quite lengthy. And once those sites have been identified and you're happy with the sites, you need to immediately start dra drafting licence agreements, getting them up, doing title searches, finding the property owners and start negotiating because it can be very, very lengthy. And I'd recommend that if you have heritage issues, find a different location. How did we manage our project? These are probably the, the top five areas for how we did it. And I can only say that um, it's only based on the fact that this is now stage three of our CCTV project that we actually have some better, better awareness of what, um, uh, what those, uh, those key pressure points are. So role clarity, make sure everybody's aware about their roles and responsibilities. That's including internal council staff and external stakeholders like Victoria Police. Be aware of project pressure points, particularly the time delays. Um, and I'd highly recommend running uh, key tasks concurrently. So as soon as site selection for the cameras has been made, you start negotiating your licence agreements. You need to make sure that everybody is cognizant of the tight timelines across council and you need to keep all your stakeholders informed, particularly um, your community members and um, your, the broader community, particularly of the progress and the expectations around CCTV. These probably takeaway message, um, be aware of the ongoing cost to council post installation. The maintenance repair costs can be high. Ensure the right skill set right from the planning phase. So make sure you've got people around the table who understand, have a good understanding about project management, project delivery, um, and particular infrastructure delivery. There's a high chance that you might need dedicated staff resources. I'm point six, and this took up most of my job for some time. <laughs> Ensure that you're familiar with relevant legislation and um, also any guidelines. So I'd definitely recommend the, uh, the Community Pr Crime Prevention Guide to Developing CCTV. This is a bit dog-eared because it's been used a few times. And seek advice from other LGAs. That's really important. Acknowledge the possibility that you're going to get requests from the community for CCTV in a whole range of areas once people become aware of it. So we've had um, requests for CCTV in a a lot of unusual settings um, because people are now aware of council's role with CCTV. And I'd encourage people to look at SEPTED, safer and healthy by design um, techniques and principles to, to solve issues, mainly because I think we're very clear that CCTV is not a panacea. Um, so we need to have a whole host of different strategies and interventions. The other key issue is particularly around having an upfront and open accessible process for people who have concerns or complaints around CCTV. Have made make that clear from the outset if people do have any issues around privacy, governance, 
who owns it, operates it, whatever the situation may be, making sure that people are aware of that, particularly in terms of local government's role.